With the Loki series premiering in just a few days, I'm going to be breaking down the entire timeline for you to get you up to speed before the premiere of the show. Welcome back to Strictly Casual. My name is Ryder, and here on the channel, we're going to be doing a reaction series on the entire show, breaking down each episode and going through all the Easter eggs. So if that's something you're looking forward to, consider subscribing. Getting started with the first Thor film, where you're introduced to Loki as a mischievous brother of the God of Thunder, Thor. In this film, we see how the rivalry of the two brothers originally started, and you can sense the jealousy coming from Loki, considering he's always been in the shadow of Thor. We see the ceremony of Thor's announcement as King of Asgard, but before he can be sworn in, Odin feels a presence of intrusion coming from the vault below them. Frost giants interfere and attack some of the guards, and we later discover they were allowed into Asgard by someone inside the kingdom. This attack leaves Thor angry and wanting revenge, while Odin disagrees. Loki proceeds to join Thor on a plot to retaliate behind Odin's back, and they infiltrate the Frost Giant's planet home and start a huge fight. Now, quick side note, during the battle, we do see Loki's hand make contact with something, revealing a bluish tone to his skin, which will be revealed later on. Odin saves the day and brings the two sons back to Asgard in fury, proceeding to banish Thor, but not before giving Loki a nasty growl. With Thor now banished and Asgard left vulnerable, Loki attempts to take over and he demands Odin tell him the truth about his lineage. We find out Odin has been lying to Loki about where he comes from and he tells him that he's been using Loki as a truce between the Frost Giants and the Asgardians. We see a flashback of baby Loki originally coming into the hands of Odin during a great battle many years prior to the film and we see him actually as a Frost Giant and not an Asgardian. Odin falls into a deep sleep after Loki yells at him in shock and Loki is left as the new ruler of Asgard plotting to destroy the Nine Realms by activating the Bifrost. Thor swoops in to save the day and destroys the Bifrost, leaving the two to fall at the very edge. We get probably the best scene in the whole film where Loki speaks to his father and tries once more to gain his approval. I should have done it! For you! For all of us! No, Loki. This denial leads Loki to let go of his past and fall to the depths, never to be seen again. Or so we would think. post credit scene shows Eric Selvig messing with the Tesseract alongside Nick Fury, where we see the return of Loki manipulating Selvig to get a hold of the Space Stone. Continuing on to the ultimate team up, the Avengers. Loki makes a huge return, now equipped with a powerful scepter that has the ability to mind control other beings. His plan is to rule all of Earth, and he almost accomplishes this along with the help of a mysterious benefactor who gave him the powerful scepter. Now, this mysterious character is later revealed to be Thanos, and we see that he's lending over his army of Chitauri to help Loki invade Earth as long as Loki acquires the Tesseract or Space Stone and gives it back to him. The final battle ensues, and Loki is defeated by a tiny whiplash from the Hulk. Thor and Loki take the Tesseract back to Asgard, and we won't see the two again until Thor the Dark World. Following the events of New York, Loki is punished for his crimes and sentenced to spend his days in a cell under Asgard. Because of a new baddie that threatens to destroy the Nine Realms, Thor must team up with Loki to stop Malekith, a dark elf who has the power of the Reality Stone. Loki makes a character-redeeming decision and saves his brother Thor from death sacrificing himself in the process. We get a dramatic scene as Thor mourns his death, but we later see a suspicious Asgardian guard show up with what appears to be the abilities of Loki. As the film concludes, Thor thanks his father Odin for all the guidance he has given him and doesn't accept the role of king just yet and heads back to Earth. As he walks away, the audience is left with the coolest reveal ever that Loki was alive the entire time. Disguised as Odin, the film ends, leaving us to wonder what Loki has planned next. Now, we won't see Loki again until Thor Ragnarok, where Thor returns to Asgard, baffled by Loki's statues and the unorder going on in his home. Thor finally finds out Loki has been disguised as Odin the entire time he was gone and demands to know the whereabouts of Odin. The two make a journey to Earth and have a nice meeting with the Sorcerer Supreme, Doctor Strange. After falling for 30 minutes, Loki pops back in and the doc reveals the location of Odin on Earth to him and Thor. Odin has a beautiful passing in this moment and makes sure to refer to both of them as his sons, leaving Loki to feel loved and appreciated. My sons, I've been waiting for you. After a surprise arrival from their long lost sister Hela, the two are thrown through the Bifrost and pop up on Sakaar, a battle planet where Loki has actually been doing pretty well on. Thor finds out Loki arrived much earlier than him and has finagled his way into a friendship with the Grandmaster. Thor and Loki team up to escape the planet along with the Hulk and Valkyrie and need to get back to Asgard before Hela takes full control. As Ragnarok is initiated by Loki, he makes sure to take a quick stop and pick up the Tesseract, which is unfortunately leading to his undoing. Asgard is destroyed 
and the gang travel off in space in search of a new home. Loki makes one last appearance and it seems his relationship with Thor is going much better. They are interrupted when we see a massive ship approaching, killing all hope of peace for the brothers. At the start of the incredible epic Avengers Infinity War, we see the mad titan Thanos request a space stone from everyone, looking at Loki knowing he has it. Loki makes a saddening speech and for the first time we hear him refer to himself as Odin's son. Odin's son. He gives the stone to Thanos, but not before trying to make a killing blow to his head. Thanos grabs him by the neck, and Loki's final words are, You will never be a god. Thanos gives him a slight chiropractic adjustment, and that is the unfortunate true death of Loki this time. No resurrections this time. Thanos blows up the ship, proceeding on his journey, snapping away half of all life in the universe. Finally, in Avengers Endgame, the Avengers team back up once more and go back in time to 2012 to New York to reacquire the stones. Because of the Hulk having to go down the stairs, Stairs. He blasts open the door in frustration, throwing back Tony in the case with the space stone inside of it. 2012 Loki, noticing that no one sees him, picks it up, goes through a portal in space, and is never seen again, creating an alternate reality where Thor doesn't take him back to Asgard or he doesn't die in Infinity War. So basically all the character development that Thor and Loki has had through these films hasn't even happened yet. And we're in a time when Loki is in full psycho mode essentially, and much so as ever the god of mischief. We're now all caught up to the Loki series, and I have a feeling this show is gonna have huge Easter eggs and theories everywhere revolving Kang the Conqueror and the multiverse and maybe even multiple realities. With the Multiverse of Madness and No Way Home happening real soon, do you guys think this show will set up the multiverse more so than WandaVision did? Or will this be just a contained story focusing on Loki, kind of giving him a redemption arc? Let us know what you think down in the comments below, and we'll see you guys real soon for the premiere of the show. Follow us on all our social media down below, and thanks for watching.